Well, up next, we have East St. Louis native, Assumption grad, and running back legend, former national champion with the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Welcome back home, running back Jerome Heavens. <clears throat> You're here. Maybe. Thank you. God. Well, well, Greg mentioned Assumption. This is two years in a row now we're enshrining someone from Assumption. Last year was Eric Wright. Yes, sir. Talk, talk, talk about those who had an impact on you that really got you going in your high school career. Well, all thanks would be to God first. And, uh, before all this happened, my mother gave birth to me and pointed me in the right direction, I think. Um, before you get to high school, you had to go through the child maturation of just growing up, and it was a challenge, but I grew up watching people like my uncles, and um, I may go off a little bit to point a few people out, like my great uncle, Charles Phillips, that's here. He was in the military and at about one or two years old, he was something that I wanted to be. Um, my Uncle Norman. Um, I have so many relatives here right now and if all you all could just wave. <laughs> and just, yeah, yeah. My Assumption, my Assumption family, my, my St. Adalbert's family, Jackie Joyner, our John Robertson family. Uh, you know, and the list goes on, but my mother and my family have always given us direction to just be the best that we could be. And athletics or sports was something that I always wanted to do. And if it wasn't anything, but like you said, jumping off one bed onto a floor or whatever, but playing football, uh, I guess that was, that was destiny. But, um, I loved every sport. During that high school career, 43 touchdowns. Mm -hmm. 3,175 yards. You're the Globe Democrat Athlete of the Year and uh, for the whole year, 1974-75. And then you go on to the Fighting Irish. What, what was it that led you to that decision to go to Notre Dame and play for Dan Devine? At that time, everyone has that aspiration of maybe wanting to play uh, professional sports and that was just a, a means to an end. I mean, you, you have to go through that process. Uh, starting from grade school, once again, Jackie, I can remember us jumping from house to house on Pickett Avenue, um, learning how to get those fundamentals down, and we mastered it. And we were fortunate enough to go from that level to two or three or four more levels that you have to go through. And that takes a lot of luck um, hopefully you can stay healthy, you get the right people to um, coach you, um, show you the right way, and it's a lot of luck. But um, um, going through that process, if I had to do it all over again, I would, I would do it. There are certainly a lot of great moments during your career in Notre Dame. Of course, your freshman season, that was the year that was Rudy, right? That the movie was made after. Rudy. Uh, what was his real name? Dan Rudiger, I think? Yeah. Do you remember Rudy much? Yeah, I remember him. <laughs> but, you know, going back to even my high school career, I can remember um, uh, Coach Munkin. Um, like you said, here's a guy that, that, that's groomed two St. Louis Sports Hall of Famers in the last two years. And Mr. Eric Wright, um, I remember him in grade school, and we went on to, to have good careers and we wound up playing Missouri at Notre Dame my uh, senior year. And I always looked up to Eric for so many years. Yeah, this guy got five Super Bowl rings, but we met up in college. And uh, that doesn't happen too often to have two Hall of Famers from the same team, you know, make a, uh, an honor. This is an honor for me. I can just say that. And for him, I'm sure it was too. But uh, that Rudy game, <laughs> I have my version of that story. And you know, you all, 
you all are my so-called home people, the people from Granite City, the people from East St. Louis, Lincoln and Eastside. I can remember Granite City North for, uh, having their first sporting event you know, when they opened up in Granite City, and now you have Hall of Famers coming in. You have uh, uh, so many people from East St. Louis. Uh, they call it now the City of Champions. It's always been a City of Champions. Um, uh, but that Rudy game, <laughs> I just have to tell you, you know, I think about it and um, I say to myself sometimes, hey, my parents raised me to be a decent, uh, a decent, um, uh, fair, and competitive guy, and I did. I had, it was a great day for me as a freshman, and I think I had like 150 yards, two touchdowns, and this guy comes in and he makes one tackle, and he's a multimillionaire. <laughs> so, I mean, look, I, I love, I've loved all of my teammates, <laughs> and I'm happy for everyone because even in this Rudy movie, and it was, people ask me right now, was that true? Was that movie true? Uh, did you, were you the one that turned in your jersey so that he could play? I was like, no, 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 no that was a little fictional, but um, um, I'm happy for him, you know, and that, that, that's life, you know, you don't, you don't turn your back on people. And like I said, my parents raised me to be a decent person and I'm happy for him. <laughs> I guess we'll move on to some better memories for you, Jerome. <laughs> 1977 National Championship. Yes. 200 yards in a game against Army that year. It was the first time anyone in Notre Dame had ever rushed for 200 yards. Mm -hmm. That was 77. And 78 became the all-time rushing career leader at Notre Dame. And still, what, 78? What is that now? 42 years later? still seventh on the all-time list so but I, I have to ask you though the 1979 Cotton Bowl and what is it 24 degrees in Dallas wind chill of who knows what it was you guys are getting spanked Joe Montana doesn't even come out for the second half because his body temperature is 96 degrees, suffering from hypothermia. The Irish are trailing 34 to 12 in the fourth quarter. And my, here comes Joe Montana back on the field with a little over seven minutes left in the game. And why did he get back out there, he claims? Trainers gave him a bowl of chicken soup. But. Notre Dame scores the final 23 points of the game, including a touchdown with about six seconds to go to win. One of the great comebacks of all time. What, what are your memories of that day? How, how did you feel? How cold was it? And when Montana comes on the field, what are you and your teammates thinking? It was cold. The conditions were brutal. I think uh, my mother, I know she's here tonight. Um, um, I called home and it was... It was pretty cold here too. I mean, it was, <laughs> everyone would hud be huddled around the oven because it was just an extremely cold weekend. But um, I can say this, um, it, it looked quite, quite gloomy at halftime, but it's just like it with anything. Um, all you have, people that have ever played sports, the chips have been down, what do you do? Do you just throw the towel in or do you just give up or do you try coming back? And, Things worked out real well. I remember a, um, a punt happened, and on that, usually if you get a punt block, it's just blocked, and you take over possession and go back and score, but we started using the clock, and it was a block punt, and we picked it up and ran it in for a touchdown. So points start coming off. The next series, we got driving, scored again. Now we think we got a chance, and it, it worked, that part worked out, but it went down to the last second. Everyone came back, but that year when I remember it, it was my last basically collegiate game, man. I'm like, I'm not quitting. You know, if you all want to quit, go ahead. But it worked out well for us again. And that was pretty much the end of my college career. But the, um, the comeback was well. We won. They call it the chicken noodle soup game. <laughs> um, um, I know my parents supported me from, from, from beginning to end. And, um, I guess before I even say anything, yesterday I lost my gr 
I lost the grandmother that <laughs> Coach Fenoy, I know you know who I'm speaking of, but every time. Uh, every time, you know, you win awards, you're supposed to be this big, strong person, but we won a national championship. I came home from that game, and I remember this so vividly. My uh, grandfather passed seven days after that, so I really couldn't enjoy a championship. And now this award comes, and it's prob it is the, the highest honor that I've ever received. And I've received awards from baby to 62-year-old man. And now my grandmother passed, and she, if I'm not mistaken, she taught Coach Fenoy. She was at Huge Quinn? Yeah, yeah. My mother, uh, aunts, uncles, uh, the relatives who are here. So we've had a good run, but time runs out. She was 99 years old. Um, um, we're going to miss her. But she died yesterday, and that's why I got a little choked up. But I want to thank you guys, because it, it's given me an opportunity to thank my Assumption crew, um, the guys from East St. Louis that we played against, which people ask me, and I'm kind of comical about this, but playing in those games that you talked about, you may think that it was, um, oh, those were the greatest games, and they were. But we played a uh, East St. Louis team in 1972. <laughs> you talk about a tough team. They had like, I know they had a, na a natural three All-Americans on the team, maybe four All-Staters, um, five, five or six other all-metro guys, and we didn't have a chance at Assumption. And our school at that time was 375 boys playing against uh, the 8A schools of today, which is like two or 3,000 people, um, a, a students. We didn't stand a chance, but they were ranked number one and we were ranked number five, and you know, I guess, that was the beginning of my career, because I can tell you, I'll be comical about this, because the people that in East St. Louis are, are they, they treasure and they treat sports with a meaning. And we played them at Parson Field, and I'll never forget that day. My sophomore years, I look at this little young man, that was tough. That stadium was packed, and I had the best game of my life against East St. Louis, and I'll compare that to the national championship game that we played against Texas, and I say that was the toughest game that I ever participated in, and we won. Assumption won, and <laughs> I don't know how it happened, but things have a way of working out, but um, um, you never should give up. We know how much this means to you, as you just expressed, how much family means to you, how much it's had an impact on your life. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome Jerome Heavens. Thank you, Holmes. St. Louis Thank Sports you. Hall of Fame.